7.24 remaining in regulation time. Penn cuts Duke's lead to one at 9.8, thanks to the Riley Huffelt rocket to cut Duke's lead to just that single goal with Jersey Joe Gillette, Joe Torty, bringing you the action on the Ivy League Network and ESPN3. I think Penn's answered a lot of questions about whether they'd be intimidated by Duke and whether they'd respond well to that loss against Maryland. Yes, indeed, and I think that was a point of emphasis the last couple days between the coaching staff and the team, the players. The players were highly disappointed after getting their uh, you-know-what handed to them on Wednesday afternoon down in College Park. And here's an opportunity three days later, play number one team in the country, show that you're an elite program, hang with them, and maybe even beat them. The rocket really was from McGeary on that last possession, but he hit pipe, and Hupfeld just uh, smartly uh, gathered the rebound and, and was able to rifle the, uh, the rebound home. Penn awarded the ball in a huge spot there, and now their offense goes back to work. Yep, the Penn crowd getting into this thing a little bit. They're starting to sense that, uh, hey, we could win this thing. McGeary comes up top for Dunn. Looking to tie. Lachardi with a head of steam comes in. Good sliding defense by Duke. Kevin McDonough not able to stick with Goldner. Switches off to Lindsay. Great now look. McGeary goes upstairs and well high. <laughs> just a little bit outside. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> well, he let it fly, didn't he? And he? He sure can. Unlike a lot of people in, in America, he's got one of the better shots. Here's Hupfeld. Give it up, Riley. Done. He can get a step. Uh, it's good, good health defense by JT Giles, but I think Dunn got uh, piped there, didn't he? That or a Fowler save. Or a Fowler save. One of the two. I'm amazed he got such a good shot off after being well defended by two Duke defenders. Certainly did a great job to get free when it looked like he wouldn't. Lachardi. Goes to Goldner. Here he comes. He's got room. And a save made. Oh, paid the price, too. That's a big spot for Fowler to come up with that stop. No stranger to uh, close games. Fowler's getting it done. Comes to help on the clear as well. Both goaltenders today uh, demonstrating a lot of strong leadership. Yeah, Junkin's been spectacular. Yep. Nine saves already. His father, Rob, and I were teammates back in the day. That's officially the 10th save for Fowler, so it's been a goaltending clinic today. How about that? Shots have evened out. How about this? 31 shots on goal, 18 shots on, or 31 shots, 18 on goal for both teams. Wow. Wow. That's a good job by both teams uh, generating shots. You want to get you want to get that count up upwards of 40. But there's still a lot of time in this thing, almost five minutes. Back Quake. to the offense, it's Duke and Quakers can ill afford to give up one here, just from a momentum standpoint. Not so much that a two-goal lead would be insurmountable, but you don't want to give up momentum at this stage of the game. Trying to keep it away from Gutterding if they can help it. Jump shot and Montgomery he, skies that one. Yeah, he just scored with that exact same shot. Uh, you know, he got their last goal. So tries it again, but this time to no avail. Penn with a faceoff advantage of 13-7, and we highlighted that before the game as being a big thing, it's and big. there's a turnover. Lachardi insisting on going back to his goalie. Just turn and run. Lachardi seeing the double coming. Yeah, I've been there. It's, it's tempting to go back to your goalie when you got a good goalie you got confidence in, but I would have loved to have seen a run out there. Here's Connor Keating.
Keating staying on. Rosner with the ball. 3.30 to play. Fakes the flip. Tries to get a step. Pens down by one. Hupfelt scored the proximate goal. Get it to McGeary behind. Little two-man game with Rosner right now. Sets the pick. Van Rappor's guarding him. Good look. And there's Woo! a shot and a score by Simon Mathias. Simon Mathias. Pulls Hello. them even. And it's 9-9. Penn and Duke, 3.07 to go. I got a little excited on that one, Joe. Just a great play. Rosner sets the pick. Springs McGeary a little free. The slide went. He made the right pass to Matthias, and Matthias knew what to do with it. Buries it top right. We got a tie ball game at 3.07 to play. Penn's gone on a run here at the perfect time. And now it's 9-9 against Duke. Santangelo has been really good taking these faceoffs. It's perhaps the biggest one of the game. He's won 13 out of the 20 that he's taken. That's a terrific day. See if he can keep it up. It's a big face off for both teams. So far, so good. Great here comes flip. Keating. And Dumps it off. Feed. McGeary, Woo! the go ahead goal for Hello. Penn. Hello. There it is. 10 9 Quakers with the lead over Duke. Three minutes to go in regulation. The fans are going crazy. My goodness, Santangelo to Keating to McGeary. For McGeary, that's his third of the game, joining Goldner in the hat trick club. And it's 10 9, Penn with the lead. First lead of the ball game. First lead is right. There's now three minutes exactly left. If they can possess the ball, well, it's too early to start talking like that. Just be in the moment. Get after this face-off. Santangelo, another win. Santangelo's on fire right He's now. He's eating Cerrone's lunch in the face-off circle. He gets it to Matthias smartly. Take care of it, Simon. We get our personnel on. James Farrell comes off. Here comes Riley Huffelt. Duke looking for a stop in the worst way here as they've seen their lead evaporate. It's a little too much time to try and run the clock out, guys. So we just got to run our offense, but Duke pressing out, understanding the uh, sense of urgency they need to play with at this juncture. Richardi's a quick one. Run with it. As we get to see the clock go down to 2 minutes and 15 seconds now. Richardi gives it up, and it's McGeary who scored the go-ahead goal back to Lachardi. And now a timeout, timeout called by Penn. Yeah, that's a really smart timeout. 2.07 left in the fourth quarter. Well, McGeary and Goldner with three goals apiece. Dunn and Matthias have also scored. And Penn with a 10-9 lead over Duke. Gutterding and Smith each with two goals and an assist for the Blue Devils. But after leading the entire way and largely being in control, Duke has seen their lead evaporate and then go the other way to Penn. And you have to think, no matter how well coached, how well prepared, that side a little shell-shocked right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I think credit Penn. Uh, we, we were saying it throughout the third quarter. I mean, it was a one nothing quarter, but Penn dominated play. And they've just been the more determined team ever since halftime. I think Duke, maybe with all the uh, pipes they hit in the first half, you know, that easily could have been an 11-4 at halftime score. Instead, it was 7-4 and um, not a big enough lead for them to you know, be overconfident, but I think maybe they got a little overconfident. And credit, just credit Penn for coming out and really playing some tough lacrosse in the uh, third and fourth quarters. And Santangelo winning those faceoffs, that means everything. It's huge. Actually, it's given the team a, an opportunity to get back in this thing. Penn has outscored Duke 6-2 here in the second half. Now, with two minutes left, I mean, the whole idea now is try and, try and take a minute out of it. You're probably not going to be able to run two minutes off uh, with possession because they're going to they're gonna call uh, stall. You know, they're going to put the shot clock on at some point. But if you can take a minute off, 
and, and generate a high-quality shot, maybe even score a goal and make it an 11-9 game. That's really, that's really what Penn is after right now. They're also after their second victory of the season and looking to knock Duke from the ranks of the unbeaten. Yep, you got Dunn, Lachardi, Hupfeldt, Goldner, Matthias, and McGeary on the field for Penn. Dunn stepping around the screen as the clock officially ticks under two minutes to go. Penn up one on Duke. Simon Mathias has played a big part in the comeback. He's got Cerrone on him. Let the time tick off, but don't stand there because then they'll be more likely to call the uh, stall warning and put the shot clock on. McGeary waiting for it at the point. Ball comes his way. That's Back to Dunn. Good ball movement. The chart is open behind. Minute 30, under a minute 30. Penn's doing a good job now. Lachardi dumps it off. Hupfelt swings it. And a shot whistles wide of the I cage. I like it. I like it. You take shots like that, it keeps the uh, shot clock from coming on. Pens shot attacking. clock's at 10. And there's oh. a shot just off the cage. My bad. I didn't even realize it was on. And it'll go down to Duke. 